Hi, it's Meg from High Scores Arcade, and today we are lusting over the 1983 Star Wars arcade game by Atari. Now, this is widely regarded as one of the best arcade games to ever hit the arcade floor, and is still pretty coveted in the collector community. Here in the High Scores Arcade collection, we have one standard upright cabinet, which is the one you see here, as well as two of the sit-in cockpit-style cabinets pictured here with our son Link. Now, what is it about this game that makes it so incredible? incredibly badass. Well, this is one of those games where the physical design of the cabinet was integral into the overall success of the game, starting with the decision to use a color vector monitor over the more standard raster monitors at the time. Now, these sharp line graphics you'll see in games like Battlezone, Omega Race, Black Widow, um, Tempest, uh, Major Havoc, and they really do well to create a depth in the play field where for in this game really makes you feel like you are flying through those trenches. Now add that to the fact that you're playing on a very enveloping cabinet design where you're actually either sitting inside the game or playing the upright version, which actually has these nice shields to either side that really pull you into the gameplay. At the same time, you've got these speakers up above giving you digitized voice clips from the movie, reminding you just who you are, Luke. And you are flying the X-Wing on an actual military-inspired yoke controller that Atari stole from its design for the Bradley Trainer, which was a training program commissioned by the US government to train pilots. So you are legitimate. And the overall effect is a much more experiential gameplay than a standard arcade cabinet. And also makes it one of the reasons why this cabinet remains highly collected because it really can't be emulated well on anything else. Now, I was lucky enough to learn this from two of the best to ever touch the game. One, Mr. Robert Merchak gave me a one-on-one -on -one tutorial and he has held the Marathon World Record score for many, many years on this game. Second, Mr. Donald Hayes up in New Hampshire gave me a one-on-one -on, -one on this very cabinet. Now, I can't promise to show you their skills, but I can take you through the first few waves of the game to get you familiarized with the gameplay and mechanics and make sure you can maybe get your name up on that scoreboard. Let's go take a look. All right, so in a game of Star Wars, they allow you to start in wave one, wave three for a medium or moderate bonus, wave five for a hard or 800,000 point bonus. We're going to jump in on medium just to show you uh, some of the game mechanics. Now you are piloting the X-Wing, and you have to shoot at the fireballs and the TIE Fighters if you can. Now shooting down the TIE Fighters will be your natural inclination, and that will give you a thousand points, but it's not as important as shooting the fireballs because that's what will take your shields away. So you do want to make sure that you get each and every fireball that's coming your way because you start with only six shields, and then you're re up to two additional shields at the end of every trench level. Now in this one, you are flying through a field of towers. Again, you have to shoot at the fireballs, which are the things that will take your shields away. But in addition to that, you have to avoid flying into these towers, which will also take the shield away from you. And if you're fancy, shoot down all of the white torrent tops on top of these towers for an extra 50,000 point bonus. I don't recommend trying that until you understand the flight patterns here and get a little bit more used to the game. So again, avoid the towers if you can, get the turrets, and if you can, additional, try to get those red tanks on the bottom floor. They won't get you big points, but they will at least um, clear the play field for you when the pattern repeats. Now this is the infamous trench level. He tells me to use the force, and using the force in this instance means to fly through the trenches without shooting at all. You'll see once you get used to using uh, going through the trench level, which really just comes down to a lot of memorization, but once you get used to flying through it without um, shooting, you actually find that you can see where you're going a lot more, a lot clearer and it will become your preference after a while. Make sure that you shoot this exhaust, exhaust port at the end. You'll see I'm going to get a 5,000 point bonus for every shield I have remaining in that um, in that wave and will also give me an extra shield to bring me up to six. It never goes past six, so even if you had five and you got two, you can't get seven, you're always going to cap out at six. Now again, the pattern repeats, only gets a little bit harder, a little bit more intense, and here you see where those graphics are moving so quickly. It's the reason why this game broke a lot of technical barriers and 
actually required two processors, um, one to process the speed of these graphics and a separate one, a processor to handle those digital voice outputs that you keep hearing. They also needed to change the style of capacitors that they were using in order to keep up with the speed of those graphics. So this is a boundary pusher in a number of ways here. And again, we're back to that same pattern where we're back to tower tops. You'll see the tower top counter in the top right hand side showing that I have 10. But again, save your lives. Shoot at the fireballs first before you ever try to get fancy with a bonus. Got four more to go here. Let's see if I can get all four. Shooting the tower tops, all of them. See, I've cleared all laser towers. That's going to give me a 50,000 point bonus. And now I'm back to this trench again. Different pattern. Again, you got to just kind of keep your eye. Oh, I got the wrong way. Got to keep your eye out on where they are. Stay low if they're staying high. Stay low if they're staying high. Stay high if they're staying low. And it's a, uh, it's general pattern recognition and um, basically a game of memory, getting used to their patterns. They don't change. So once you know them, you know them. And again, shoot the port. Fifty thousand for using the force in that way, which was way four, and it brings me back. Death Star destroyed, 5,000 for every shield remaining. Here I am now, wave five at 741,000. That's it for me today. If you are new to High Scores Arcade, we are arcade collectors and preservationists with over 160 titles in our collection here in Northern California. You can play some of them at our arcade at 1414 Park Street in Alameda, just across the bridge from San Francisco. Our mission is to collect, protect, and share back the very best game titles from the classic era of arcade gaming. And if you wanna be a part of our mission or even just watch us as we do it, we invite you to please like, subscribe, share our content with your like-minded friends. And if you'd like to contribute towards our preservation efforts, please visit highscoresarcade.com and you'll find a link there to donate. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you next time.